Live from the Austin Convention Center in Austin, Texas, it's The Cube at Dell World 2014. Here are your hosts, Dave Vellante and Stu Miniman. Welcome to Austin, everybody. This is Dell World 2014, and this is theCUBE. Stu Miniman and I will be broadcasting today and tomorrow live from the show floor in Austin. This is Dell World, Dell's big customer event. Uh, I think it's the third or fourth year that they've actually done this, Stu. Um, and of course, the, the big transformation of Dell has, has occurred. Last year at Dell World, Dell had just gone private. Uh, late October last year, Dell became a private company. Uh, and after a long protracted fight with uh, what Michael Dell calls, the person Michael Dell calls the great icon. Uh, and so Michael Dell won that battle and now owns 75% of, of Dell, the company he founded in a dorm room when he was 18 years old. One of the fastest companies ever to get to a billion dollars. Um, the situation since that time has been um, all rosy from what we can tell, although we can't unpack the numbers. Michael Dell has been very vocal about life as a private company. Michael Dell's coming on tomorrow, and we're going to talk to him about uh, what it's like to be a private company, but he's come out recently talking about how in the last quarter the company's PC revenue has grown 19%, while the rest of the industry, if you take Dell out of that, is growing at, I don't know, 0.2%, basically flat. Um, and so he's very, very excited. Of course, there have been some cutbacks at Dell. There have been some layoffs. Um, so, but nobody De really Dell wouldn't use the term layoffs, though. Yeah, well, so. okay. But there's been, there's been some, some headcount reduction, I should say, right. Actually, it wasn't a forced layoff. I believe it was uh, through attrition and, and, and some incentives, right? So, if I can, in fact, you'll talk about this. Michael Dell addressed that, that yesterday. But the point is there, I, I said this, and have said this for quite some time now, Dell, when it was public, was about a $60 billion company trading at about 50 to 60 cents on the revenue dollar. Um, just for comparison, IBM probably trades at you know, two cents on the revenue dollar. EMC up three to four cents on the revenue dollar because of VMware. Software companies like Oracle will tr trade at, as I said, eight cents, eight dollars uh, on the revenue dollar. Uh, uh, Oracle will, tr will trade at eight to 10 times revenue. Uh, so software companies have that higher multiple. Uh, Dell was trading at a, a, a fraction of its revenue, as, as does HP. Bad sign in the industry. What was happening is since 2008, Dell Stu has been a work in process, transforming the company, going on a $13 billion buying spree, purchasing companies like Perot for $4 billion, and the likes of Equalogic and Compellent to get into the storage business, uh, acquiring assets in networking. And so it really was transforming. Outside of PCs, when it was public, Dell had about a 20, 20 to 25 billion dollar company revenue outside of personal computers. And that's growing, my estimates are it's, it's pushing close to 30 billion. The problem is it wasn't happening fast enough. The headlines were all focused on the decline in the PC market. Michael Dell has called this a plague of short-term thinking because of a 90-day shot clock that he had to be up against. Um, what a turn events, Stu, since the 1980s, 1990s, when of course Michael Dell was the darling of Wall Street. Yeah, Dave, absolutely. When we talk about what's been going on in IT, uh, you know, companies are trying to transform from just cutting costs uh, to actually creating new business value. So the privatization is going to allow Dell to really re, you know, re, reinvent themselves uh, and change and move a lot faster to capture those trends of cloud, mobile, uh, big data, social, uh, which Dell had pieces of those, but uh, they had to really go up you know, up through the chain and answer to Wall Street and go through a lot of bureaucracy. And the message coming from Dell is now that they don't have to answer to, as you said, the 90-day 90, the, the 90 shot clock, they can move much faster, take advantage of the solutions. Uh, what they talked about at the media uh, kind of launch yesterday was that they can listen to customers and act fast. You know, rather than taking, you know, a year to get back to them, it's let's go from the idea to getting something in your hands in, you know, a couple of weeks or a month. So, you know, new 
new technologies and new solutions to kind of get out there. A lot of announcements this week uh, that I know we're going to dig into with, with our slate of guests here, talking about the, the Dell Cloud Marketplace, hyperconverged solutions, uh, you know, so big data software uh, offerings that are out there. Um, and it's interesting to see where Dell is, because Dave, you've talked about a lot. Companies work off of their free cash flow, and the PC business really you know, delivers a lot of cash into Dell, and you know, that helps allow them to drive new innovations and new solutions uh, that, that they can work to grow. Um, but at the same point, you know, Dell's making a lot of bets, and a lot of people are watching is like, okay, well, what is Dell at its heart? Uh, they'd really moved from being uh, somebody that you know, took about a bunch of components, made it easy to order and easy to ship, to bring things in-house. You mentioned the Equalogic and Compellent acquisitions, and uh, you, you've got things like Boomi. You know, how is, what is Dell going to create versus what is Dell going to enable? The cloud marketplace that they have is leveraging you know, Google and AWS and Joyent, uh, but you know, Dell doesn't own its own data centers. So you know, what does Dell own? What does Dell deliver? What's the role of the channel? A lot of stuff for us to unpack here. Yeah, we're going to talk so. about that. We're going to try to help people better understand Dell's strategy. I mean, it seems to me, Stu, that their strategy really is to make it easy to do business in virtually any sector. Whether it's, whether it's personal computers or, or enterprise products, that walking around the floor here last night, I mean, Dell essentially has one of everything. You know, it's got big data, it's got converged infrastructure, it has servers, it has storage, it has networking solutions, it's got services, it's got you know, booth on internet of things. I mean, virtually anything you could think of that's driving enterprise hardware and software, with the exception of applications, you know, and, and the database and middleware layer, anything below that, Infrastructure related, security, Dell's got it. And yeah, so. and actually, Dave, they don't have one, they usually have three bets. In networking, they're doing an open networking initiative. So they have their Force 10 hardware, they're partnering with Cumulus, they're working with other suppliers to give people a choice out there. Microsoft's a big partner. Red Hat's an important partner. VMware's an important Oracle. partner. Oracle. And then from the application side, absolutely. Oracle and SAP and Microsoft are all big players. So, you know, they don't own the next generation application, but how are they going to enable some of those environments? So it's interesting for a company like, we, I, I, I you know, shout out Oracle here. Oracle, as you know, exited the low-end x86 server business, um, basically saying we want to chase profits, not, not revenue. Dell loves that business. <laughs> Dell, you know, Dell, Compaq, and some others sort of invented that business. So they, they, they know how to make money with low cost x86 servers. IBM doesn't, IBM, that's why IBM exited the business. So it'll be interesting to see how that dynamic occurs. But if you looked at Dell's business, Stu, just prior to them going private, they had an enterprise solutions business which was running at about uh, three billion a quarter, maybe 12 to 15 billion dollars a year. A services business that was about 10 billion dollars a year. Um, uh, 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 a, 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 a cloud business, what they call the cloud business, which was less than a billion, it was, but it was probably running at a two to three billion a year, and then they had a software business, which was quite small, you know, probably around a billion dollars a year, but you add those up, they've got about a $30 billion business today, in, 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 at least approaching 30 billion, it's tough, we don't get the numbers anymore, we don't get to see that stuff, but the interesting th story, as you pointed out, with Dell was cash flow. Dell threw off tons of cash, particularly from its PC business. Uh, its operating cash flow was probably about three to 3.5 billion the quarter that it exited uh, the public markets. <clears throat> now, here's the interesting thing, Stu. As I said, they, they and oh, by the way, they had $13 billion in cash, which I think they used some of that to, to, uh, uh, to restructure the company. But the point is, Dell was a cash machine. And as I said, they went on a $13 billion buying spree over the last you know, several years. What would happen is Dell would use its cash flow to fund these acquisitions. Now, what some competitors have said is, well, Dell can't make those acquisitions anymore because it's going to have to pay off its debt service. However, what Michael Dell has said is, that, well, I don't have to do dividends anymore. I don't have to do stock buybacks, so I can still fund those acquisitions. So that's something that we want to better understand and, and ask about. Uh, they still, can they still execute an M&A strategy as effectively as, as a private company as they could as a public company? Yeah, absolutely, Dave, and you know, so many competitive angles that we're going to need to go through. As you said, Dell uh, is one of the few that owns their whole business. You know, IBM sold off their x86 business. HP just you know, split into two pieces from the consumer and the enterprise. Dell spans that consumer and enterprise with both the PC business, the tablets. Uh, Michael Dell said that Dell will not really enter the smartphone uh, piece, but they'll own the tablets and they'll own a lot of applications. The cloud marketplace will help for a lot of those environments. So uh, it, it's tough. There's very few companies that can really span that consumer and enterprise market, even though if you look at the big cloud guys, you know, Amazon, 
Amazon and Google and Microsoft all have touch points on the consumer side that give them scale and reach across the globe. Now, the other, the other piece, the other big change in Dell is the channel. Dell has been reaching out to the channel for the last couple of years. I mean, there's been a channel land, land grab, as you know, Stu, and, and virtually every company in the enterprise has been reaching out to the channel. About 40% of Dell's revenue now goes through the channel. Um, and that's a big change. Of course, Dell was, is the direct company, right? They basically cut out the middleman. Well, they've been reaching out to the middleman, and of course, the channel initially, I think, was very skeptical. I talked to Dorothy Rosenthal last night. She's a channel expert, former IDC colleague of mine. And she said, she confirmed, Dell is serious about the channel, and they're actually doing a really good job with the channel. So that's another fundamental. We've seen companies like NetApp completely transform. Uh, EMC, another one. IBM, obviously. HP, strong channel presence. Um, really change the way in which they're operating from a, from a sales and distribution standpoint, Dell taking a similar page out of that playbook. Yeah, Dave, absolutely. Uh, you, you know an area that I focus a lot on is the converged infrastructure piece, uh, and Dell has an OEM uh, a solution with Nutanix, which they announced it, it's the Dell uh, you know, XC platform, I believe it's called, with Nuta powered by Nutanix software. I actually have some brand new research on the Wikibon site talking about how a fully integrated stack, uh, which uh, the Dell CCC group not only takes you know, their server and the Nutanix hardware, but actually puts in uh, you know, the hypervisor and the, uh, the, the VDI manager in that that entire solution, so it, it goes to market, and that, that's a channel-built solution. Nutanix was built on driving the chan channel solution, uh, and you know, Dell's going to you know, help enhance that. Uh, all the other solutions that they have are going to expand on that. All right, Stu, uh, keep it right there, everybody. We'll be back uh, with our next guest right after this. This is Dell World 2014. This is theCUBE, we'll be right back. <laughs>